Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to read uh, Dave the Potter, Artist, Poet, and Slave. And before we get started, I want to read you this little passage. Dave was an extraordinary uh, artist, poet, and potter who lived in South Carolina in the 1800s. He combined his superb artistry uh, with deeply observant po uh, poetry carved onto his pots, transcending the limitations he faced as a slave. In this inspiring and liter uh, literal uh, portrayal, National Book Award finalist Laban uh, Carrick Hill and the award-winning artist Brian Collier tells Dave's remarkable story, one rich in history, hope, and long-lasting beauty. Dave the Potter, Artist, Poet, Slave by Laban Carrick Hill. Uh, Hill, illustrated by Brian Collier. To us, it is just dirt, <clears throat> the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grain slip between your fingers. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was clay the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned uh, to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it is just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh-cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest to put up salted meat to hold memories. Each one, uh, each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay grounded, ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water, drawn from Big Horse Creek, until wet and stiff and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, Dave's hand, buried in the mound mud, pull, uh, pulled out the shape of a jar. His chapped thumbs pinched into the center, squeezing the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun around and around, the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened collapse. The jar grew so large Dave could uh, no longer wrap his arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and roll long ropes of clay between his hand, his dry, cracked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half-finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with his heel of his foot. The shoulder and rim shrugged upward as the jar took the shape Dave knew was there, even before he worked the raw mound on his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand the time. But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and wrote 
uh, uh, wrote to let us know that he was there. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. August 16, 1857, Dave. Dave of Life. Dave is an important American artist. His beautiful craft, uh, crafted jars stand out among the pottery of the time. His whimsical poems em embody, em yeah, embodied a simplicity and deep emotional complexity that rivals Japanese kaku. These are remarkable accomplishments in themselves, but for Dave, who lived most of his life as a slave, they are even more incredible. We have uh, printed his poems here as they appear on the pots, including mistakes, as well as various marks such as dashes and plus signs. As Leonard o. Todd states in his book, Carolina Clay, with so few words surviving from his, uh, this gifted and unusual person, almost um, almost alone in his role of slave witness, it's important for us to get them right. Dave created his art in spite of a society that not only discouraged his brilliance, but threatened him with death for expressing it. We know about Dave mainly because of what he wrote on his, porch, uh, in his, uh, on his pottery. For long periods of time, Dave did not write on the sides of his uh, pots, perhaps because he knew it was not safe. He would sometimes just sign his name. The only uh, he only had a first name because slaves were not allowed to have family names like Hill or Collier, and that's the uh, last name for the author and the illustrator. Other times he would put uh, he would just put the date. Once in a while, he would uh, include a poem. Perhaps he wrote his poems for a specific person or maybe just uh, anyone who could read. And this is one of his poems. Put every bit all between. Surely this jar will hold 14. That was paint, uh, created in July 12, 1834. This poem was written on one of the earliest pots that we know, uh, we know for certain Dave made. It tells us the pot can hold 14 gallons. Dave was uh, one of only two known potters at the time who could successfully make pots that were large, larger than 20 gallons, sometimes as large as 40 gallons. To do this, he had to wrestle more than 60 pounds of clay on his turning wheel, a feat that required great skill and strength. Another poem. Dave belongs to Mr. Miles, where the oven bakes and the pot biles, July 31st, 1840. Some of what he, uh, we know about Dave is uh, buried in the shadows of the lives of his owners. The first rec uh, record of Dave dates to his 17th year. His name appeared on a contract to borrow money to buy a house. Because his age is mentioned, we know that he was born sometime around 1801. We also learn that he was born in the United States, but we don't know where. Another poem. A better thing I never saw when I shot off the lion's jaw, November 9, 1836. We can suppose that Dave lived a life much better than uh, that of most slaves who worked in the fields. As a potter, he had a skill few black people were allowed to learn. Slaves were generally used to, for unskilled jobs. White slave owners feared that if their slaves learned skills such as blacksmithing or pottery, they might demand freedom and respect. For the same reason, slaves were not allowed to learn to read and write. How Dave learned uh, may never be known. Another poem. Another trick is worse than this. Dearest Miss, spare me a kiss. August 26, 1840. According to Leonard Todd, um, Dave lost his leg when he was around 35 years old. After that, a, a friend, Henry, whose arms were crippled, kicked the potter's wheel for him. 
the details of this story is in this book um, are taken from Dave's life before and after he lost his leg. But the focus is on Dave and the potter uh, and the poet. With this in mind, the facts surrounding Dave's lost leg were not included. Another poem. When you fill this jar with pork and beef, Scott will be there to get a piece. April 21st, 1858. We do not know that some of Dave's poems leave, uh, we do know that some of Dave's poems leave a smile, while others offer observation of his life. The sun, the sun, moon, and stars in the west are plenty of bears. July 29th, 1858. Over the years, Dave's poems share the pain of losing his family as well as his love for others. His words express his humanity, his compassion, and his own passion for life. According to Jim uh, Bute uh, Coverden in I Made This Jar, it's another book, it is estimated that over seven decades, Dave made approximately 40,000 pots, but it is only through these few surviving poems that we get to know uh, we get to know him. The last surviving jar inscribed with the poem uh, is dated May 3rd, 1862. This poem is fitting epithet of Dave. I made this jar all of cross. If you don't repent, you will be lost. I, I really enjoy this book for, for many different reasons, um, and, and uh, I, I want to go back to this center page, and this is a, a page that folds out. It's in the center, uh, but it shows the steps of how Dave actually uh, creates the pot on a spinning wheel, which uh, to get the spinning wheel to turn, he's actually kicking it with his foot. So the first image we see, uh, Dave is actually trying to get the clay in the center. Uh, and so he, he, he's got a big mound of clay, and it, his hands have to be uh, wet, so he's probably got a, a sponge or a bucket of water nearby to keep his hands uh, uh, wet, and that makes the clay very, very slippery. And so as it's turning, he can actually sort of shape it. Once the clay is centered in the, in the middle of the, the spinning wheel, he will then take his fingers and, and sort of uh, make an indention in the top, and, uh, and he'll go a little bit deeper all the way down, to the bottom of the uh, of where he wants the pot to be without going all the way to the wheel. And then as he's um, doing this, he's starting to, to squeeze uh, the clay in between his fingers here and his thumb on the outside. And that what that does is it controls the thickness of the walls. And he starts to pull the, the pot up. And here he is sort of smoothing out the center as he's uh, also pulling up the walls. And then he would take uh, long rope-like coils and put the coils around it and then smooth that out as it's still spinning on the wheel and uh, to create a seamless, uh, very, very tall uh, pot or, or a jar. So I, I, like I said, I really enjoy this, uh, this book for uh, many purposes because it sort of gives us an insight uh, on uh, how to make pots and pottery and, and how to work with clay from the beginning all the way through uh, to the end. It also focuses on uh, Dave himself, who is an artist, um, who is a, a slave, which was very difficult uh, at the time that he was making these pots, and his uh, what he wrote on the pots, his poetry, which has uh, is still touching lives today. Uh, so I, I really, really enjoyed this book, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. This is a uh, page that gives thanks. The uh, author, um, uh, LeBan Hill, uh, wrote uh, for Lori Smith and Jennifer Hunt, both of whom made this book possible. So he's giving thanks to a couple of people who helped make this book. And um, uh, Brian uh, Collier, the illustrator, who has won many awards, uh, Caldecott Awards, for his uh, picture books, he wrote this. I dedicated this book to all artists and everyone who loves picture books. Because this story I re uh, is, I'm sorry. Because this story is really about the power of human spirit, artistry, and truth, and that cannot be silenced by bondage of any kind.
by Brian Collier. I hope you enjoyed this book, uh, Dave the Potter, uh, Artist, Poet, Slave, by LeBang uh, Carrick Hill, uh, illustrated by Brian Collier.